A photo emerged of Johnson wearing a MAGA hat outside the Capitol. That picture cost him his career. It's starting to seem like they wanted something bad, something worse to happen. I welcome back. Thank y'all so much for clicking play. Hopefully you click that like button too. Hit the like button, guys. And also try and share these videos because if you just share Fox News videos by themselves, conservative news by themselves, um, a lot of times if someone's on the left, they're not going to click it. But you'll be surprised how many people I have on the left who still support my channel and they're just waiting to receive some information. So if you share it, the more it goes out, the more the ranking lifts and um, it really helps out the videos. It, it really does. Not trying to get you to do anything you don't want to do. Don't if you don't want to share it. That's your business. But like it. That would be dope. We're about to check out a conversation that um, Tucker Carlson actually had with one of the police officers. They're talking about how um, the force was unprepared. Like they was just completely unprepared during this time. So of course, there's going to be a little bit of graphic um, video for the people who are live with me. But um, if you're watching this after edit, then you should be fine. Okay. Many in federal law enforcement knew perfectly well there was going to be a huge demonstration in Washington on the afternoon of January 6, 2021, and that it could become potentially violent. There is no debate about that fact. The FBI knew. But it's also clear that many on the U.S. Capitol Police Force, the frontline officers who protect the Congress, did not know. They had no idea what was coming. And because they didn't know, they were completely unprepared for what happened that day. That is a very strange failure of communication, and it has never been explained. To understand more about the response to January 6th inside the Capitol, we sat down with a man called Tarek Johnson. Johnson served as a Capitol Hill police officer for 22 years. Hmm. On the young brother, look, he looked young as hell. He said he, he served for 22 years. On the day of the protest, he says he was responsible for securing the certification of the presidential election. If there is anyone at the very heart of the January 6th story, it's former Capitol Police Lieutenant Tarek Johnson. And yet, for some reason, the January 6th committee never called him to testify. My voice was one of the first ones you hear on the audio transmission, so um, I, I did expect to get an interview at some time, but no, it didn't happen. Uh, I guess the focus um, um, was on Donald Trump. According to Johnson, no one answered his numerous pleas for help over Capitol Police radio frequencies. Has he been fired or something, or did he quit? Like, how is he able to even have this conversation? Because I would think, I would assume that the Capitol Police would be like, yo, you can't have these conversations with people. Like, um, if you're even thinking about doing an interview about this, um, you can be held accountable at some point. Johnson says he, quote, didn't hear anything on the radio. According to Johnson, Yogananda Pittman kept vital information about the protests from frontline officers like him. So I'm believing that this was the chief. This is the chief of the Capitol, um, Capitol Police right here. And I don't know if she is still the chief of Capitol Police right now because she had the information, but maybe it didn't disseminate to where it was supposed to go at some point. Pittman was the assistant chief of the department in charge of intelligence operations. We should have been better prepared that day, and we could have been better prepared that day if the information was disseminated like it was supposed to be. Once Look, he said the same word as me. Ah. Protesters moved inside the building. Johnson's first concern was the safety of senators. His job was to protect them. In rising panic, he called over the radio for direction and assistance. Even now, two years later, he is baffled by the response he got. I was requesting permission to evacuate the Senate side, um, the Senate chambers, uh, because I had a clear line of sight to get them out the Senate door, and I didn't get permission. Um, the dispatcher called a couple times to see if I can get permission. No response. With Yogananda Pittman and his other supervisors unresponsive, Johnson says he decided to begin the evacuation of senators himself. Wow. So when we start to see the, the people running across the hallway, that was all because he started it? The person that I thought was going to authorize the evacuation didn't do it. I wanted to get those members of Congress out as quickly as I could. That's why I initiated, um, you know, those evacuations. Me being disciplined, um, it wasn't as important as not getting the members of Congress and their staff to safety. Footage we reviewed seems to bolster Johnson's account. The video shows Johnson conducting the evacuation of senators from the chamber. You know what it's starting to seem like? And maybe it's just me, 
It's starting to seem like they wanted something bad, something worse to happen. It's like they wanted something worse to happen because he's being told not to like to leave them alone. Don't evacuate them. This is getting good. It's getting too good. Don't evacuate. Don't evacuate them. Let them stay right there. Who this is going to be good. Who in the world was controlling these puppet strings, man? Like this, like, was there some type of sick game that was being played throughout this thing? Did they wanted to come off bigger than it actually was? Did they did they wanted to seem like there was a a Trump brigade that was um holding a whole bunch of senators hostage or something like that? Is that what they wanted? Yet Tark Johnson was not rewarded for what he did. He was punished. A photo emerged of Johnson wearing a MAGA hat outside the Capitol. That picture cost him his career. Sometimes I look at it and like, thank you God for blessing me with this hat. And sometimes I'm like, wow, I wish this hat never came in my life. A Biden voter, Johnson says he donned the hat in an effort to rescue fellow officers he believed were trapped in the building. That is so smart. That is so freaking smart, man. I'm gonna go ahead out there with my MAGA hat and let them know that. <laughs> Let them know I'm on y'all side, man. I'm on y'all side. Any other, y'all see any other police officers out here? Are they all right? Oh, man, come on. You ain't hit them up. You ain't beat them up too bad, did you? Oh, y'all ain't touch them. Y'all just got them over in the corner. Hey, brother, come on. Come go with me. You good? You good? Anybody else out here? I think that's a great tactic. Listen, that is a great tactic. I actually came up with something like that. Like, I was going to do a skit, and, and this dude has done what, uh, man, wow. He works fast. I figured if I had the hat on, it'd be easier for me to navigate my way through the crowd. It was um, basically self-preservation and um, de-escalation, um, and I needed to get up those steps. I couldn't say what would have happened walking through that crowd without it. But for the crime of wearing a Trump hat, Johnson found himself suspended. Ultimately, he resigned from the force and lost okay. his pension. He was suspended for wearing a Trump hat, but he was the reason why all of the senators got out of there. Please help me add that up because as the young folks say, the math ain't mathin'. It's just not. And I'm still trying to understand what the math ain't mathin' is, but I guess if I use my context clues, it just means that it's just not adding up. He now works part-time as a furniture mover. Yogananda Pittman, meanwhile, thrived. Two days after January 6th, Nancy Pelosi elevated Pittman to acting chief of the Capitol Police. Why in the hell would she get a raise? What am I missing, man? I'm It's a whole lot missing from this story. It's a lot missing from this story, man. Late last year, Pittman took a high-paying job as the head of security at UC Berkeley, which is right outside Pelosi's congressional district. Berkeley announced Pittman's hiring with unqualified praise for her, quote, steadfast commitment to social justice. Pittman herself boasted about her heroic performance on January 6th. Her department, she said, quote, saved democracy that day. We reached out to Yogananda Pittman for comment, but she didn't get back to us. Of course she didn't, because she's about to get cooked. Of course, it would you have reached out? You wouldn't have reached back either. You would have been like, nah, I got something that day. What day is it? Yeah, I got something that day. Oh, you had the wrong day? What day you say is another day? Yeah, I got something that day too. They're not letting you. Come on, bro. You, that's the same reason why um, Ron Stewart won't do a debate with Steven Crowder and, and, and Bill Maher is being forced all of a sudden to say that, you sure I got to say it? Is it my contract? Okay, I'll say it. Joe Biden is a great president and I will vote for him again. Thank you. They are controlling these guys, man. It's like they go, little puppets, little puppets. Look, they controlling them by remote control, man. It's crazy.